Hello, hello. Surprise live. <laughs> hello, whoever you are. Hope you're doing well. Just getting set up here. Yeah, so I have some <clears throat> Etsy orders that I want to get done tonight because I have a lot of ideas for new stuff. Um, so right now I'm cutting out the stabilizer for my dresses because I just ran out and I have a dress order to work on. So I'm just cutting off long inch strips. I'm just putting it in some random Amazon box. Hope you're having a good day, morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time it is, wherever you live. <clears throat> I know I've been kind of MIA a little bit for the lives, but I am back. I'm just going to cut a bunch of this so that I don't, then I don't have to worry about it. And if you're wondering why my hair is so poofy, it's because I just showered and blue dried my blow dried my hair. So it's always quite the hot mess. Oh, and then I kind of broke this ruler too, so that's unfortunate. <clears throat> Let's see, I'm trying to make it as straight as possible. Yeah, I know I just came on here kind of randomly, so I don't, didn't expect a ton of people to come on right away. <clears throat> Hello, whoever else just joined. Hope you're having a great day. Just cutting out some stabilizer for some dresses. Oh, hi, Carol. Thank you for joining today. Appreciate it. And thank you for subscribing. Yeah, a lot of what I do is sewing and embroidery. I have an Etsy shop, so I work on orders a lot. So that's essentially my channel in a nutshell. Just trying to make sure it's all nice and straight. Hi, Julianne. Yeah, so um, as you guys know, I have been on vacation for the past kind of week and a half. I know I had some pre-recorded videos, but I was planning on going live yesterday to work on orders, but I just wasn't feeling that great. So um, yeah, that's why I decided to go live today because I've missed catching up with you guys. Um, and I know I usually go live on Wednesdays, which I am still planning on doing my Wednesday live. Um, however, that live is exclusively for making new items. So I thought I would just go live again and work on some Etsy orders just because I'm feeling lazy and don't really feel like recording and editing a video. So I thought I'd just go live. <clears throat> Are you guys working on anything today? Just feel like watching me? Yeah, I got a big bolt of the stabilizer, so I also need to get more elastic as well. I got to get a lot of things for my shop. But yeah, like I said, today is just working on orders, and Wednesday we'll be making new stuff. New to sewing. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, I'm planning on... So on Wednesday's live, I'm not exactly sure. I'm making like new outfits. Let's just, I'll leave it a kind of a surprise, but I'm making new outfits for my Etsy shop that may or may not have a specific theme. So yeah, I'm thinking of maybe making new items for that. Like, I don't know what exactly what I'll make, but I got to look on Etsy and see what kind of sewing patterns that they have. But glad to have you here. Just trying to stay cool. It's 93 here. Today feels like 102. Oh, what, if it gets above 90 degrees or feels above 90, I don't even bother going outside because I know I'll just be miserable the entire time. <laughs> yeah, well, I was at the 
Jersey Shore this past week and a half, and if it was ever like all 100 degrees or more, I just knew myself that it was just not a good idea to go outside, so I stayed inside. So here is what we cut so far. Do you do embroidery as well, Carol, or do you just do sewing? And what kind of projects have you done so far? Always curious to learn more about you guys. But I'm hoping to do some embroidery tutorials. I have some beach towels I'm planning on embroidering and doing a tutorial for. Um, sewing tutorials. I don't have any ideas in mind yet. But, I mean, I could change my mind. Who knows? But I am planning on going to Joanne's and Hobby Lobby probably tomorrow. Um just to get some new fabrics to make some new items because uh, like I said, I've been gone for a week and a half and I haven't been able to make new stuff and I just have these three Etsy orders to work on and then I'll be all cut up. So very happy with that. I just shipped out three orders yesterday. So I am slowly but surely catching up, getting rid of all my open orders so I can just focus on making new stuff. No, just sewing. I made a hanging towel and a pillowcase. Oh, cool. Did you make a pillowcase with the zipper? Um, I think by actually I did a sewing class with Joann's and I made, did I make, shoot, what did I make? I think I might've made a pillowcase. Yeah, I think they, we were making pillowcases and you can decide to do a zipper or not. And I was like, zippers are scary. I'm not going to do a zipper. Um, and since then I've made purses, I've made kids clothing, all different sorts of things. So I'm not afraid of zippers anymore, but yeah, so that was my first ever really sewing experience. And then kind of from there, I learned from myself and YouTube and I don't know, I just kind of have that crafting gene. So no zippers sounds challenging. Yeah, it does. I mean, I, like I said, I make bags and stuff like that, but even a zipper with a pillowcase still sounds intimidating to me. And I've been sewing for a few years now. So, um, yeah, I think they did, they did have that option, but I don't know if they have it anymore. Hi, life happens. Hi, not brave enough for zippers. Yeah, they're very intimidating for sure. Especially because you don't want to sew them wrong. You don't want it to look all wonky. And definitely, they're for sure intimidating. Yeah, so I went from that to kind of, yeah, my first sewing projects were like infinity scarves. So if you're new to sewing, that's a really great beginner project as well. Um, so like it's pretty much you just sew in a straight line. Um, and then you kind of connect the ends together. Maybe I can do... I'll do a video tutorial for that, especially with fall coming up and well, not coming up, but you know, um, before you know what fall will be here. So, um, super easy. Um, I do have some up in my Etsy shop, uh, which I'm thinking of, well, I actually life update. I closed one of my three Etsy shops. So I closed down my shop that had the purses. Um, just because I didn't get, I haven't had any sales or anything in that shop in a long time, but I have had somebody reach out to me to do a previous customer that wanted something custom made. And I just like a custom um, zipper pouch sort of a thing, like a, a wristlet kind of, sit. yeah, it was a wristlet. So they wanted a custom wristlet and I just haven't really had the time to do it. So, um, and I'm horrible with communication. I just definitely need to work on that when it comes to um, being an Etsy seller and growing my business. So, um, and then she's, uh, I didn't respond to her for a couple of times. And then she's like, oh, I guess you're not doing it right now, but thanks anyways. So I felt so bad. I'm like, I'm so sorry. You know, I don't really do any custom work right now. I've been pretty busy with my other Etsy shops. And so I kind of, I did close that sh or put that shop on vacation mode, at least for the summer. And then I'll probably reopen maybe in August, um, but not take any custom work just because I think it would just be too much. 
Um, but I'd like love to do like home decor and things like that and offer that in that specific shop because that's kind of what I'm gearing it more towards. Uh, but yeah, so my sewing journey definitely started with infinity scarves. Um, that was, and then I kind of went to making handbags and zip, zipper pouches. That was my next step, uh, which I know definitely sounds kind of scary, but <clears throat> when it comes to, well, the thing is with zipper pouches, it's like easier to do than with, um, pillowcases. Um, I don't know how it would be making pillowcases. I've been debating on making pillows, embroidering them for my shop, and then kind of making them from scratch, but I haven't completely decided yet. Um, okay, so that looks like a good amount of stabilizer. So I'll probably stop with that. Ooh. Am I going to start bleeding now? Got myself with my nail. I might not bleed. I have band-aids, so that's one thing when I got COVID, I'm like, I have nothing in my house for illness. So I just kind of went hog wild and bought all this stuff. I think it might be okay. It's not like intense. Okay. So that's that. Um I have a shirt we have to work on tonight, so I have to embroider out a shirt. Oh, my God, a new order of AJ Blanks. This is what I use for my kids' embroidered shirts. So I have to stitch out a shirt for that, a size 6, which is why I had to order these specific shirts. And there's a size 6. This is what it looks like all neatly packaged. And once I'm done embroidering it, I'll literally just put it right back in the sleeve. Hi, Megan. I enjoy watching your channel. Thank you for joining us, Monica. And thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. Like I said, I've got tons of tutorials and things like that I want to make. I know I keep saying that in every live, but I feel like I'm slowly but surely getting the hang of being more consistent with YouTube. So this one is just a shirt. So we got one order for shirt, one order for squirt only, and then we have this nine to 12 months dress and they're all using the same sort of a fabric. So I just ordered a few AJ blanks for sublimation. Oh, that's cool. I haven't tried, I don't have anything for sublimation, so I haven't bought and purchased any sublimation blanks from her, but um, I would definitely love to try it if I get enough money for sublimation stuff because right now I'm trying to save up for a multi-needle machine which if you guys have watched one of my recent videos I explained that I am looking for a multi-needle still in like their research phase and still saving up um there is a local brother dealer by me um I looked at their website and they do have some multi-needles there it's about like a half hour drive I would say um, which they did have multi-needles, but they didn't have the prices listed. And I'm assuming they'll be kind of pricey. So, but who knows, maybe I'll get lucky and they'll have a used machine for fairly cheap. So we shall see. So I'm using my classic old candy fabric, which is, is my last bolt. So I'm going to have to order some more. But luckily, it only costs... Um, $4.99 a yard when I get it from a big bolt like this. Otherwise, it would have cost more. Um, I think it was like usually $6.99 a yard, but this, since I have the Joanne's business account, um, then it only costs $4.99 a yard. So I usually get two bolts at the same time. So I don't have to keep purchasing stuff. I love that fabric. It's so cute. Thank you. I love it too. Try to come up with new ideas for like new birthday outfits. Um, I uploaded a cow themed birthday outfit. Uh, let me turn my sound off here. Yeah, I uploaded a cow themed birthday outfit to my Etsy shop and it's got some views, but it hasn't done as well as I thought it would. Um, it's like, it's an appear seer, pink seersucker squirt. I'm bleeding a little bit, but that's okay. 
It's in a pink seersucker score, and then it has the number is in pink seersucker, and it has a little cow next to it. It's so cute, but nobody's really been favoriting it or purchasing it, but they keep buying this candy fabric, so I don't know. I guess candy birthdays are in right now, and maybe cow birthdays are not. I'm not sure. Etsy's just weird like that, to be honest with you. Or just birthday themes in general. Because I've tried unicorn. I've tried like rainbow birthday theme stuff. And I haven't gotten really... I haven't gotten any favorites or... Well, I've gotten a few favorites, but... Mostly it's just... Uh, oh, let's see here. I'm trying to optimize this fabric the best that I can all kind of ch choppy. Got my trusty old trash can by my side here. Oh, the back bodice fit. Ooh, got lucky. It will fit. Uh, oh, wait. No, okay. So it's supposed to go like this. can still get two back bodices. You can see what I'm doing. Monica, do you do any sewing or embroidery? Or are you just kind of still in the learning phase? I love these fabric weights. I got a bunch of them from Amazon. I think they came in like, I want to say like a four pack and I got two packs. So I have eight of these. Hi Minerva, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Just cutting out a dress order and then we will start going to the craft room and start cranking out these orders because I have one shirt Two, I have the dress that somebody ordered today, but I told them I could get it out today, which is fine. And then I have a squirt, which I don't think has to ship out for a few days, but I just kind of want to get all these orders done so I don't have to worry about it. I got to make sure I make my markings as well because I forgot to do it on one of my dresses that I shipped out yesterday. Well, and then I got a very nice five-star review yesterday as well. So slowly but surely, the reviews are trickling in and the person said they got a lot of compliments on her daughter's outfit. So I'm just very happy with that. Now for this scrap, I might be able to get a number out of it because uh, based on this is supposed to be the side, so it's supposed to kind of go up and down, so I might be able to get a number out of it. So I'm gonna add it to my scrap pile. Hi, Stacy. Hope you're doing well. Forever working on Etsy orders. That's all right, I should be getting caught up tonight. Plus, I keep making the same thing over and over again. So I'm hoping with, when I make my new items next Wednesday or this Wednesday on my live, hopefully I will start to get some more orders for other stuff. Okay. Guys are pretty chatty today. I'm liking it. Sometimes I just sit here and Maybe one or two people talk, but I'm liking the chatter going on. And like I said, I know some of you guys are new to my channel. So if there's anything that you want to see me make, or if you have any questions about anything, please let me know and I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. Just finishing out cutting out the skirt for a dress. I 
my beloved candy fabric that I have to order more of. People love this fabric. It sells like hotcakes. But I'm really happy because I'm starting to get more dress orders. Um, about the same amount, actually, as my birthday outfits with the sport and everything. So very pleased with that. Which I might think of maybe offering a skirt option if people are into that. So that's always a possibility of something new to add to my Etsy shop. I think I have a tutorial on how to do that. Hi, Coffee Life. What's your name? Welcome to my channel and thank you for subscribing and for joining us today or tonight. I usually go live kind of early afternoon-ish, but today after work, my social battery wasn't too drained. So I thought, why not go live? Adriana. Well, nice to meet you. Thanks for joining. I was just mentioning, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Because that is what I'm here to do, is to teach you and hopefully keep you entertained for the next few hours. Because I'm planning on just cranking out these orders with you guys live. Because it's been a minute. Love to catch up and see what got things you guys are working on. And like I said, I am planning on also going live on Wednesday. Uh, not sure about the time to be determined, but I'm planning on going live Wednesday. I'm going to be making, making some new items, some outfits actually. Um, I won't tell you what exactly they're for because I want you all to be surprised, but let's just say I have a particular theme in mind. So if you guys want to guess in the comments or in the chat what you think it will be, let me know. But of course, I won't be able to let you guys know because I want everybody to be surprised when I come on live. Away from computer, but I'm listening. No worries. I'm assuming you're also working on orders. I think you you have an Etsy shop or some sort of business. Is that correct? I know you said you're away from your computer, but don't feel free. If you don't want to answer it right now, you don't have to, but I'm just curious. Okay. So we got... He's done. I have the squirts, or not the squirts, the six. Okay, I got the pleats, the panel, skirt panels done. Now we just have to work on the front pieces, which should be fairly easy. So they don't require much fabric. Working on things for a craft fair slash market this weekend. Ooh, that's fun. Uh, are you selling any 4th of July themed items? Because I'm assuming, you know, since, let's see, this weekend's going to be, what, like the 26th or so? Working on local orders. My Etsy shop should be opening in about two weeks. Oh, that's exciting. Is it like through your friends and family? Or are you advertising on like Facebook and stuff? Because I would love to get more involved in like the local community around here. Get some local orders. I did do a craft show, as you guys know, a few weeks ago. And although it was not very successful, it was still a fun time. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do a craft show, another craft show this summer, but... We will see, but markets are so much fun. Have you done one before? Hi, Sonia. Welcome. Getting a new crowd here since I'm not usually live in the evenings, but appreciate every one of you that is dropping by. All the new people, all the OGs, I appreciate you all. All right, last piece to cut out, and then I have to 
make my markings on my squirt, which a pen is over there. Or I keep saying squirt. That's because I make so many of them. I'm not used to making dresses at all. So cutting out a dress, if you're curious. The last minute order, I think they ordered only a couple hours ago and my processing time is usually one to two weeks, but since I only had those two items to make, I thought, why not add that to my list of items to get done tonight and, you know, more money in my pocket and hopefully they'll be more inclined to leave a review since I'm going to ship out their order so quickly. Okay. I have so many empty bolts of fabric as well. I just don't know what to do with them. I feel like I should almost not bring them to like Joann's or something, but like if I ever get fabric there, I'd be like, hey, can you just roll this up for me real quick? Thanks. Um, I don't know if they'd actually do it, but I think I have like 10 or so empty bolts of fabric. Okay, let me make my markings. There's a pen right behind the computer. So I'm making markings for my pleats on my skirt because that's essentially how this dress works. Forgot to do this for one of my orders yesterday and it was just kind of a pain in the butt to do this. Yeah, so there's little arrow markings there. I'm just making the markings at the top there on the back of this, the skirt portion. And if you're concerned about the wrinkles on the, these dresses, I always give them a good heat press before I start working on it. Amount of time, so. But that one definitely needs to ship out today. Because all the orders that needed to ship out as soon as possible, I shipped out yesterday. So these orders are just kind of the remaining ones. And like I said, tomorrow my shirt order definitely has to be in the mailbox on the way to the customer. I sew and I am trying out embroidery. Ooh, fun. Embroidery is so, I love embroidery. It's just so much fun, all the different things you can make. Like I said, I'm planning on getting a multi-needle machine, hopefully sooner rather than later. Again, not nothing's in the works right now. I'm just kind of doing my research, but I'm really excited all the new items that I can make with my new machine. So uh, what kind of embroidery machine do you have? Because even with the four by four, you can still make a good amount of projects with it. And I think I, I have a embroidery tutorials on how to make a lovey and then also how to embroider a kid's shirt. I think that's all the embroidery tutorials I have. I'm pretty sure. P800. Oh, that's a good machine. Yeah, I have the step above it technically is the NQ 1600E, which is a 6 by 10 embroidery machine. But the, four, the P800 is a good machine as well. I've gotten into doing embroidery since October. Love it. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, I think, Julianne, I believe it was you that commented on one of my recent videos that you're still hesitant to try embroidery. It is intimidating at first, but, like, if you do, like, a simple project, like, just embroider on a piece of fabric just to kind of get the feel for it and see what it's like. And then you can kind of work on more complex things because um, it is – it is fairly not difficult to do a kid shirt, but it is when you're working on a flatbed embroidery machine like P800 or um, like my machine, the NQ1600E. Um, it is more difficult to embroider on it since it's a flatbed, but uh, it's still it's a really great time to use those machines um, and just learn all the different projects that you can make. You just really got to jump into it. Um, I recommend that when you're starting out embroidery, 
there is a sim thread it's called it's like I think it has like 70 colors that come in like a container so you can like test it out and if you're not sure if embroidery is for you then you can easily sell it um, and then a step up above from that is Madeira thread which is what I use that I use the little bit little spools and then I use kind of the bigger spools I'll kind of show you guys the difference if you're new to embroidery kind of what it looks like um, and I'll even mention the colors that I use as well in case you're interested. All right, so that is it for just putting my sizes here away. There we go. So that is it for the cutting portion. I labeled all of my pleats on my dress. So that's all good to go. Um, I don't think I need anything in here. Get my two orders. And then all of my stabilizer. So if you guys get motion sickness, just close your eyes for a second because I'm going to place you down in my embroidery room. All right, close your eyes, everyone, if you get motion sickness. Trigger warning. <laughs> Okay, I haven't turned any lights on or anything in here yet, so, um, and I'm in, I'm in my pajamas, so don't judge me. Once I get out of the shower, the PJs automatically come on. It's just a thing. Okay. okay. All right. So first, oh, let me show you these poly mailers that I got. Um, it's kind of looking a little dark over here and weird. Let me put you over here. Show you my new poly mailers. I'll probably do a short or some sort of video on this. Um, oh, lots of questions. What embroidery software do you use? I use Embrilliance Essentials. Uh, so I first started out with the free version, which essentially you can do like a number. Um, you could also do a name as well, but it can only be one file at a time. So if you wanted to do like a number and a name, then you would have to upgrade the software uh, to level one, I believe, which is what I use. Um, so yeah, Brilliant Essentials is the ugh, editing software that I use. Um, let's see, are the fabric weights worth it? I think so. So let me show you my different fabric weights. I've kind of tested a bunch of different ones. Almost knocked over my iron. I'll be right back. All right, so these are the fabric weights that I have purchased. So these are the ones that I use now. As you can see, they're nice and thick. Um, I don't know exactly how much they weigh. And then these are the thin ones that I got at first, but they like don't hold the fabric down at all. So I definitely recommend fabric weights. Really good investment. You don't have to worry about your fabric moving around. You can just put it on and then you can manipulate the fabric and not worry about the paper going anywhere. So um, I definitely recommend the thicker ones rather than the thinner ones. And uh, probably after this live, I will include it. Uh, can I include it in the description? Um, I will link it into the description right now. Okay, let me find it on Amazon. Returns and orders, it was fairly recent. Oh, and I've also got to show you guys the mannequin that I bought. Yeah, so I got four pack large Wiseman glass fabric weights. Um, let's see. They weigh about five to six ounces. I don't think, I don't know if that they're that heavy. Um, but like I said, I'm about to put it in the description right now. Paste. There you go save. Okay. 
Um, when did you open your Etsy shop? I opened one, but I ended up losing money on ads and fees. That's the thing. Don't do ads. Um, I know people say to do ads and everything like that, but if your SEO and your titles and your tags are on point, then you should organically be getting sales into your Etsy shop. That's what Etsy will get people is all the different all the different fees and things like that that are just a pain in the behind and take away from your profit essentially. Um, I heard, uh, I read on Facebook, I'm a part of different Etsy groups and somebody said that um, somebody bought like a $90 order and then after all was said and done and after they took away their um, like the fees and everything and also how much it makes to cost that item, they only made like $10. So it was crazy, but I mean, at the same time, that person should have raised their prices. But uh, yeah, so fabric weights are really great. Um, I opened my Etsy shop, my first one, and I believe I was a senior in college. So I know it was, it was January 2017. So it's been, what is it, five years now since I opened that shop? And that was my knitting shop. Uh, then uh, about a year or so later, I opened up my second shop, um, Uncommon Jane Boutique, where I was selling uh, handmade bags and purses um, and things like that. But I'm I put that shop on vacation mode for now just because I don't really have time to work on that shop. It's just kind of dead and just sitting there. It hasn't gotten many views. So I really want to revamp that shop. And uh, my kids shop, it's been going to be two years in December, beginning of December. Um, so yeah, Etsy's been quite the wild ride for sure. Um, I know a lot of people have been complaining about Etsy and their fees increasing and whatnot, but for the most part, my deposits have been making sense. Um, I know some people say that Etsy or Etsy's taking out too much, which it, it's tough because they are definitely cutting into your profit, but they are bringing people to your shop. So I think it makes sense to have to pay some sort of fee for that. Um, like I said, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you do ads or anything like that. Um, for example, I was running ads on some of my items on my Etsy shop. But then when I looked for those specific tags, my items were organically, even without ads, already on one of the either the first or the second search page for that particular tag. So then I took my um, it's the ads down. And I actually tend to do better when I don't have ads on, like I kind of have gone back and forth with ads, but I haven't done ad any ads in probably about a year or so. And my shop's been doing fine for the most part. Um, like I said, I think I've gotten like three orders while I was, um, on vacation. Um, but as long as you have a really unique item that you're pricing it right, and it's a competitive price, your photos are good, your SEO and your tags are on point, um, which I believe I think I have a video on tags and tips and tricks and different things for Etsy listings and whatnot. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely check that video out. But um, but yeah, it's been a, quite the wild ride with being on Etsy for five years. Um, I've been mainly focusing on my only my two Etsy shops, um, working on my Yarn Designs by Megan right now. I have um, like knit hats and scarves and uh, different things like that, beanies. Um, so I've sold a couple beanies last winter. I'm definitely planning on making more items for that shop. I have a bunch of hats I've made that I haven't listed on there yet, so I'll have to do that. Um, but I'm right now, like since it's summertime, I really want to focus and get ahead on the different holidays and different themes that are coming up that people would want to purchase stuff for. Um, so I was late to the game. It's what's weird because for the holidays, it seems like every other holiday I'm on point. So for Easter, I was on point. I got my items listed um, for uh, St. Patrick's Day. I had items listed on time. Um, but for the July, we're just kind of want, want sort of a situation. Um, I did sell a couple 4th of July shorts from my listings last year. So that's why it's nice to kind of have items from last year up there already. So then you still have some items for that specific theme. Um, but yeah, so 
you will like it. I need to get the software. Yeah, Umbrella Essential is, is a really great software. So definitely recommend it. Super, super friendly, uh, user friendly. There's tons of tutorials actually online on how to use it. Um, I don't even know what videos I have anymore. So I think I do have some sort of uh, Umbrella Essentials tutorial. Um, oh, in my last video, um, if you guys have seen my How to Embroider a Kid shirt, I show you how to use Umbrella Ace Essentials to kind of combine different designs, how to download them from Etsy and everything like that. So there is like a little section in that video that you can use to kind of figure out how I design my designs, um, which I'm about to do design one right now. So you can kind of, if you do refer back to that video, it's, I try to go not super into detail, but cause I can, I, so in that video, which I'm about to do now, actually, um, there's a number, which is one file, a candy design, which is another file. So they're from two totally different Etsy sellers. You just got to download the same sort of file. Um, so for my brother machine, it's PS. And then the third part is I had the name. Um, so I had kind of three different uh, parts that I had to kind of get combined together. So if I didn't have Umbrellance Essentials and I the paid version, then I would not have been able to do what I did. Um, yeah, definitely look into it. Uh, I try, I know it's, I always try to make my tutorials short, but they always end up being around an hour. So I'm sorry about that. I just like to talk and kind of like explain as much information as I can to you guys. So I don't leave anything out. So um, that's kind of why I'm even chatty in this live, just because I like to talk about this stuff. You know, it's one of my passions in life. Um, okay, but let me get my folder for my stuff. So I'm going to start digitizing design now. Okay. Perfect. So this one, I actually might do a new listing for because it's a number six birthday shirt. Um, however, they want the name to be in purple. And the design that I have listed, it has the name kind of in, it's in hot pink, red, and like teal blue. So I'll probably add a new listing for that. So let me just plug in all my stuff here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna literally do what I did in that video. I would say it's probably about halfway through the video is when I start um, digitizing, not digitizing, but getting the design together and brilliance. Uh, so let's see here. Um, okay, let's see. Purchases. Number. The way at the bottom. P.S. Want number six. I know you guys can't see what I'm doing. All right, six applique, five by seven. Move it all the way to the left, which I should have fabric already with heat and bomb right on it, so that's good. A cupcake or no um candy I'll be with you guys in one second let me just finish getting this design all designed Let me just leave it like that. And then the sweetheart font. And her name is Ava. Let 
Maybe I'll make it two inches. Oh no, too big. All right, one inch. Yeah, also don't be afraid to download fonts from Etsy because you will, every once in a while you can find a good one. A lilac to remind myself that it's in purple. Yeah, they need it by the 30th, so I definitely want to ship this order out tonight. Save as. Ava 6 purple. Perfect. Ava. Save it to no name. I think my USB might be getting full, so that's not good. And I never quit the file just in case if it turns out a little bit wonky. Okay. So let me get back to my stream. Hi, Delisha. Welcome. Seeing some new, new people in here. I'm glad to see that. Oh, let me, did I? Uh, oh, I did not eject my USB, so let me do that. Come on, eject, there you go. All right, so now the file is all prepared. Okay. Are you gonna get a multi-needle machine? Sorry going to keep this on, but I have to take my son driving, getting ready for road test. Oh gosh. <laughs> Luckily for my parents, they only had to teach me how to drive. So uh, yes, I am planning on getting a multi-needle. Um, I actually said earlier that I'm thinking hopefully ra sooner rather than later. However, I'm still trying to save up my money, um, trying to do my research as well, because I don't want to just jump the gun and get any multi-needle. Um, I'm looking at possibly a buy embroidery machine. They actually have them on Amazon, so I've been looking at them, trying to figure out how much it would cost to ship. Um, also, I live in an apartment, as you guys know. Um, so that's one thing is I would rather like see a machine in person and see how loud it is. And then if it's quiet or, or ish, um, then I would rather get kind of more quiet machine. Uh, so there's also a brother dealer. Well, not a, they're not like a brother dealership per se. They're like a mom and pop sewing shop, but they're affiliated through brother. Um, so it's about half an hour from where I live. So I'm planning on going there, kind of seeing what the options are maybe this weekend even, just to kind of like get an idea of learning, trying to figure out what to aim for, what the best option is. Um, I've heard they are louder than a serger. Oh, really? Hmm. So my serger is pretty loud. So that's because I was thinking of decreasing the stitch stitchometer, is it? Like the stitches per hour or whatever. I'm thinking of decreasing that, but that's why I'm thinking of maybe a brother embroidery machine. I just feel like it could possibly be quieter. Um, if you guys are new to my channel, luckily there's no, nobody lives. There's It's an empty room right next to my room, essentially. So I don't have to worry about disturbing anybody. That was one thing that I was worried about was when I moved here is that I would bother people and get noise complaints, but nobody's really complained. Um, whenever I surge, I always try to keep my, my door here closed so nobody will be bothered. Um, but yeah, thinking about either a buy or a brother embroidery machine. Um, I know that brother will probably be more expensive. Um, ideally at least a 10, 10 needle machine. Cause if I got a six, six needle, I'd probably be like over it shortly. But if I got a 10 needle, I feel like I'd be more content longer if that makes any sense. <laughs> I have a Rakoma EM 1010. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me is I'm also checking out Facebook Marketplace. And I was so annoyed because a few months ago, somebody put up a Rakoma EM 1010 in my area for like $4,500, but I didn't have enough money at the time. And I was so annoyed. And it was literally like a 15 minute drive from where I live. So it literally would have been perfect. So that's another thing is I, I'm also checking out Facebook Marketplace seeing what people are pricing the stuff for. 
Of course, I'm going to want to get a stitch count, one that was last serviced, even possibly see it stitching out an action just to make sure it works before I like give them a boat boatload of money. Um, my neighbor hears my serger, but doesn't complain. Yeah, like I said, um, I haven't, I think it's pretty for the most part, like when I'm in my bedroom, um, which there's somebody living next to the wall there for my bedroom and I don't hear anybody. So I feel like the walls are pretty, I guess, soundproof or they're well built. So who knows? Um, yeah, I mean, if it just is what it is, you know, sometimes stuff's loud and just kind of is what it is and trying to grow business and make extra money. And um, yeah, it was such a great price. But like I said, I didn't have the money and and time and somebody purchased it. So I was so annoyed. So I might just like keep an eye on it for Facebook Marketplace because Racoma, Melco, Brother, those are all ideal brands for me. So we will just have to see what happens and what the different options are. So I'm going to put you over here, grab my order. Let me see if you guys can see what I'm doing at all. Yeah, you can see. I'm just going to start hooping my shirt. This design will take a while to stitch out, so that's why I kind of want to get it on the machine now, and then I will start working on my squirt order. Ignore all the mess in the background. I literally haven't even had a second to breathe, so lots going on here. Ah, uh, no, I don't want that. Okie dokie. Have that have you thought about payment plans? Yeah, I don't I don't know. Um I mean, I don't really want to finance a machine or anything like that, but I don't really know how all that stuff works. Uh cuz my parents have always taught me just to pay stuff up front and in full, so um I don't know if that would necessarily work best for me, but I'm not sure. That's one thing when I go to this dealership is I'm going to ask about different payment options. And I know there's like 0% financing and all that stuff. I don't really know what any of that means. So even with taxes, all that mumbo jumbo just right straight over my head. I don't know what any of that means. So that's why I'm going to make sure I know everything and anything that comes to the specific machine that I'm thinking of purchasing. So then I know exactly you know, what I'm getting into, essentially. Okay. But if you want to know how to embroider a kid's shirt, like I said, I have a whole YouTube video all about how to do that. So I go more in depth about what exactly I'm doing the different types of stabilizer, combinations, all that fun stuff. Sorry, I'm being nosy. I want to get one, but I hear about everyone getting payment plans. I just want to want to outright buy one. Yeah, that's the thing is like, I just want to pay for it and be done and not have to worry about like paying for it for like months on end. You know what I mean? So no worries about being nosy. You know, I love to hear all this stuff about from people as well. So like I said, feel free to ask any sorts of questions, you know, no worries. It's not like you're asking anything like personal, but um, in short, I'm trying to save up for it, make new items for my Etsy shop so then I can make more money to save up for a multi needle so I can further grow my business. But like I said, it's starting to get to the point where multi needle would be very nice, especially when I have to embroider like four birthday shirts. And then it takes like, like if I have to do embroider four shirts, it'll take me the whole day. So I'd rather get a multi needle and not have to worry about that. Yeah, you're not being nosy at all. It's okay. 
I was explaining that too, that I was earlier in the video, um, in this live, I was explaining that I'm in the process of getting a multi-needle. So it's not like I was div divulging, not divulging any information with you guys. You know, I want sh to be honest with you guys about my business journey and how I'm investing in my business and how it's going. So, and my opinions on things, um, Just trying to figure out how far down to go with this shirt. Because I usually, for my smaller shirts, I go all the way up. But I don't think I will do this for this outfit. For this shirt, because you just want the shirt. Perfect. Okay. Multi-meeting needle goals. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's always a goal when it comes to an embroidery business, right? Is getting that getting that first in a multi-needle will be not to sound dramatic, but like life changing. You know, know what I mean? So uh, I think I have a number. Thought I had a number in here. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, this will be plenty big enough for a number. You just trim off. Which reminds me, I got to find my embroidery scissors because that would not be good if I couldn't find that. Also, gotta get my trash can over here. Do any of you have any multi-needles or are there any that you would recommend? Yeah, let me show you guys the thread that I use. So I use, let me put you over here so you can see better. So I use Madeira thread. So this is one option that it comes with is this is the smallest. It is poly neon, 100% polyester, a thousand meters yarn or yarn um, thread. So this is in a pink color, which is 1921. So this is a common one that I use. And then I usually use this colored thread for like the number on my candy shirts. Um, so the, this is the biggest one that you can get, um, which is 1816. So this is more like a light pink and this is more of a true pink. Um, so this is also the poly neon, hundred percent polyester. This one is about 5,000 meters. So this is a thousand, this is 5,000. Um, so I went from the Sim thread all the way to Madeira thread, which is really great, high quality. Um, I think the smaller ones are around... $2.99 or $3.99. And then I think these are like $10 maybe now. I don't know. Because inflation and everything like that, the prices go up. I only have the Rakoma EM 1010. No other embroidery machine before. Oh wow. You went you went in for it. Wow. I was not that bold. Um, plus I didn't have the money because when I started my business, I was in grad school. So I uh, didn't have money, didn't have a job, so I just kind of used my savings and bought this machine, um, which this one at the time was about one fifteen hundred dollars. Um, so let me put you back here. Um, I need to clean all this up because I can't see anything. You put my get my sign started to be pulled up. I have to find my embroidery scissors. So it's not good that I can't find it. Uh, where was the smaller one? Oh, I don't remember. Okay. All right, I need to get something done here. <laughs> so did you not save or six Ava? Can't.
This, my friends, is why you always um, don't get rid of your brilliance before. Because uh, it said not said cannot read files, so I'm going to have to resave this one onto my USB. So I don't know what happened with that. Never had that issue. Might be too big. That's the thing. I think it might be a little bit too big. It's a big decision for sure. All I have is a Baby Lock Force 2 single needle. I wasn't that bold either. Well, it's still like a $1,500 machine or however. I think that's kind of how both of those cost. That's still a lot of money, you know. It's not like you're just throwing in like $200. I mean, anything over $1,000 is a lot of money if you ask me. Um, so let me pull up. No, it should be fine. It fits in the hoop. So I'm going to have to resave this design. Even though it's PS, it transferred over okay. Oh, I think it might be because I already have an Ava in there. That's right. So file save as. Ava. So hopefully that one worked. Yes, it should be in there. It should be fine. So like I said, I never get out of brilliance, even if I save it on a USB, just in case if something goes funky, which it just did just now. Uh, let me get my trash can over here. Do I have my my scissors in here? I do. So I just got back Sunday from my trip, so that's why all my stuff. Okay. Uh, the finder is not using it anymore, so you can be ejected, please. Okay, go back, pull you guys up. Ooh, I'm looking puffy today. Oh, Western New York. I'm also in Western New York. Welcome, Cindy. Just trying to embroider out a shirt if my design will transfer over correctly. Okay, what the? Jeez. Technology is not liking me today. All right, pull up that design. Got the candy here. Looking for number six. Oh, there it was. All right, it's working now. I'm gonna trace the top of my design. Yep, that works. Luckily, the larger the shirt, the larger the area that you have to work with. I'm from Silver Creek, about 25 miles out of Buffalo. Nice. I live in Henrietta, Rochester area. Okay, let's start stitching. Oop. Jumped too quickly for me there. Looks like it's doing this the circle in the middle first. Thanks for joining us today, Cindy.
closet sometimes just to make sure it doesn't get funky. Yeah, this is not going to take 39 minutes to stitch out. It's going to take longer than that. Just doing the outline of the number. Jumping around too much on me here. Okay. Get my fabric ready. Which I believe goes like this. really like your videos. You were so real on how things happen. Yeah. Like my last, was it my last video? Or no, it was my making my dresses that I was like, made a big mistake. And I like took my whole machine apart. That's pretty much how I am on a daily basis. Like if one thing goes wrong, I have to take it all apart and like look at it piece by piece. Even if it's like the simplest thing, I'm like, I have to dissect this. I have to know what I'm doing. But yeah, that's the thing when it comes to embroidery, you're going to mess up more things than that, right? So if you're nervous about embroidery, you're going to mess up. It, it's just going to happen. You know, it's part of life. So don't don't let that worry you or anything because I mess up and I've been doing embroider for, embroidery for years. So, okay. Trying to figure out how to strategically place this fabric. I'm trying to make a little hole in this center here. Yeah, for the six, I'm making a hole in the middle so that way I don't have to like worry about accidentally trimming anything with my shirt. So even though I got extras of this, I just wanted to make sure that I don't mess this up. Because I did that during another live is I messed up a numbered birthday shirt and then I had to do it all over again. make mistake you just gotta roll with it yeah usually gotta kind of babysit this part flatten out of the way. Yeah, 
because it's kind of doing a, this is why multi-needle would be great because then I would have to not have to do all this and I can just let it stitch out, walk away. Of course, I would still have to cut out the applique, but I wouldn't have to like babysit it like I am right now. Not all out of the hoop, but you know what I mean. You're not alone. I do the same thing. I toss things also when they don't come out right. Yeah, I'm famous for chucking stuff, to be honest with you. Especially when you're like doing everything that you can to make it right and then it just doesn't turn out how you expect it. It's very frustrating. Try to be careful. start to see the six in there. Then once I will babysit it for embroidering out the number because it bounces around but after that it's usually kind of in the same area so the rest of the embroidery so I don't have to like sit by it while it stitches out each step. Oh I got a favorite on my sixth birthday outfit so essentially this one. I can probably get another number out of this so that's good thank you guys so much for all this thumbs up and all the support okay I'm gonna have to take my medicine in a minute so after I finish cutting out this part then I will run out of the room for like 30 seconds and I'll be right back So here's the number, kind of looks upside down, but it's a six. They just ordered a shirt so I don't have to worry about an outfit with that. So like I said, I will be right back. All right, I'm back. Let me just double check with this listing to make sure that they, what I have listed for it. All right. Name and color, okay. Just wanted to make sure that they wanted the name to be in purple. Um, and not the number. Okay, I'm gonna make it back to you guys. All right.
and I do the outline of the number in light pink. Okay. Embroider towel sets. Nice. I want to do towels as well. Like, I really want to do like gift sets. Um, let me actually get my headphones here. Oh, might help if I actually threaded my needle. Maybe just a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to go get my headphones. I think they're just in the other one. Okay, can you guys hear me better? Hopefully you can hear me better with the machine going on. Yep, so just doing the satin stitches for the number right now. It's working on the inside, so I don't have to babysit it as much. But, yeah, like I was saying, I would really love to – let me just make sure it's connected. Yeah. I just really want to make, um, like, gift sets. So, like, newborn gift set, housewarming gift set, um, just really anything gift-ish, like Christmas gift set, like um, – you know, like an embroidered shirt with matching pajama pants. I would love to do something like that. But yeah, so towels are really great, especially beginner friendly, uh, embroidery beginner friendly for sure. Yeah, I started watching Angela Jasmina, and that's kind of where my obsession with making kids stuff started even though I do not have any children fun fact don't even have any fur children yet I'd like to get some fur children but I'm not there yet plus I'm doing a lot of traveling this summer so it wouldn't make sense to do that doing the zigzag stitch for the number. Now it's doing the sand stitches around the whole number. I just finished 32 sets and they have to be shipped tomorrow. Ooh, wow. That probably works up kind of quickly though, right? How long does it take you to embroider each towel? Do you do like two large towels or like a large towel and a hand towel or what kind of towels do you make? I was thinking even making like fun kitchen towels. Like um, I tried tea towels, but they're just not really my thing. So um, I actually have a bunch of tea towels that I've never used. So, um, but yeah, towels are really great beginner friendly product as well. Cause you can just, for the most part, let it stitch out. You don't have to babysit it. Um, unless if you, since towels, you usually have to use water soluble stabilizer. So, uh, but usually I pin that down so I don't have to worry about it getting bunched up. But if you ha you're not doing that now, I recommend you consider doing that. Looking good. This should take about nine minutes. Um, 
and then after that, we will start working on the first, the next order, which is a squirt, because like I said, the next embroidery area is kind of in a little area, so I don't have to babysit it as much, but the applique pieces are kind of a little all over the place, so I had to do a stitch out, stitch out, applique, stitch out, so it'd be like all over the place when it comes to stitch outs and kind of random appliques thrown in the mix, so uh, yeah. That's, that's how that works. But yeah, so for this part, I have to babysit it because it's using such a large surface area. If you guys have Etsy shops, how is your shop doing? always curious because I know some people most people for the most part have said say that they're not doing that well but my shop's been doing pretty well so I'm pretty happy but but like I said I have a full-time income so I don't have to worry about being full-time with Etsy because full-time and full-time would just be too much for me so I'm happy with the amount of orders that I have coming in right now Depends on the design. I do kitchen towel set. There are two hand towels, two pot holders. My bath sets are one face cloth, one hand towel, one bath towel. Yeah, that makes sense. How long have you been embroidering towels for? And do you have like a, a website or do you kind of do word of mouth sort of a thing? So I'm definitely leaning more towards driving traffic to my website. But yeah, yesterday was crazy because um, I posted an Instagram reel and immediately got so many like favorites and stuff. It was kind of shocking. Um, but I, I used a celebrities kind of uh, voiceover, so I think that might be why. But it was like all of a sudden I had all these people like liking my reel and it was just kind of crazy. But be back trying to figure out why I'm unable to see the chat. Oh, that's not good. Probably refresh the page or get out of it or something. Because I have even for after this video was posted, I have it for. Oh, sorry, you guys are shaking. That's annoying. There, I'll hold it. Yeah, because it's doing the satin stitches, so it's kind of obnoxious right now. Um, but yeah, even for after this live is over, I have the live replay on, so I'm not sure why you're not able to see the chat. But like I said, I'm glad you all joined. Seven years, it's all word of mouth. Oh, that's cool. Have you done any like markets or craft shows or flea markets or anything like that? Because it sounds like you got a pretty good business going. I mean, if you have um, 35 sets that you have to be, sh that have to be shipped tomorrow. I mean, that's, that's good. That's really good, actually. I'm hoping to be that consistent one day with sales, but I see it's kind of up and down all over the place for me lately. I do it all on a SE nineteen hundred. Is that is that a four by four machine? It, isn't that like sewing and embroidery? Or maybe I just don't know my machines. But yeah, that's crazy that you have so many orders like that well you know what it is is that you 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 get orders from some people and then they tell other people and then you kind of get like your own business naturally going like that so that does make sense especially if there's not really any embroiderers in the area oh I do festivals oh that's fun yeah I really want to do festivals like um 
like you said, you're kind of near the Buffalo-ish area. But um, yeah, the Fairport Canal days, I was so impressed with all the different booths that they had there that I would love to do that. But it seems kind of big and kind of scary for me right now. So I don't know if I am up to do a large festival like that, but who knows? Did you do the Fairport Festival or anything or no? Yes, yeah, so gotcha, gotcha. All right, so now it should start to be doing the applique parts. Which kind of take a while. Okay. Get to the white. I have all my embroidery thread on my stand here. I have the big cones up top and the middle ones, or the smaller ones in the middle, and then at the bottom, I have my various stabilizers. So this is why, this specific design is why I would love a multi-needle machine because there are so many freaking color changes with this. It's ridiculous. So there are 38 color changes. So it's kind of a lot. I have to get a new white as well. You can kind of see that it's running low. All right, I'll get this color set up and then we can start working on the squirt. So this is teal. I was thinking about it, but got scared, yeah. It is scary. I mean, they have like hundreds of vendors. They have food trucks. It's like people from all over the place come to it. And I was like amazed, but you probably have to invest like a lot of money. That's why I kind of like do my little rinky dink once because then I don't have to like worry about getting a tent. Like I like to go, I like to do them inside because then I don't have to worry about tents or weather or anything like that. But especially outdoor events and big events like that, you're really risking possibly not getting many if any sales and then if you don't get any sales and you invested all that money and then you're kind of screwed okay so now it's going to start working on the cotton candy part so let me bring y'all over here so like i said it's just this part is just kind of in one area so i don't have to babysit the rest of this Oh yeah, we're good. We are good. All right. So like I said, I'm gonna be working on the sport now. These usually work up pretty quickly because I'm used to making these all the time. Uh, they ordered a four years or four T sport. And I put all of my different fabric pieces in these holders. So I just put the orders um, with the fabric and then I just include like a little thank you sticker. So that's kind of how I organize my orders. Because when you're working on a bunch of different um, clothing items, you kind of have to keep them all organized. Even if you're doing shirts, just anything you can to keep your orders organized, I highly recommend that you consider using a system like this. And then I have a little um, basket here that I keep my, I'll put this to the side over here since that's what I'm currently working on. But um, so this is here. here. I've done four craft fairs this year and my fifth one this weekend. They're fun getting to meet other meet new people. Yeah, I love getting to know people. That's the thing, especially when it comes to crafting, like we already have something in common because we're both here and both being a vendor. So obviously we have that mutual interest. So I definitely really love to um, meet other crafters and kind of get to know them. So I'm just going to start working on the shorts. 
or the scorch. I don't think I should run out of bobbin anytime soon, but we will see. It's luckily this is the only shirt that I have to embroider out. And after these three orders are done, then I'm done catching up with my orders. I have a face page on Facebook. Um, my Facebook call, my brain, where I get most of my orders. Cool. Do you like sell through Facebook Marketplace? Is that where you post your items? Because I've tried it and it just never worked for me. Okay. Change the thread to dark teal. I feel like Facebook is such a great place to get buyers, but I don't I don't want to do ads and stuff like that. Like I am just not the biggest fan of ads. I'd rather organically get the sales, which is why my website is kind of like not ex like not I don't haven't had any sales on my website yet, which is the biggest why I need that, but sorry you're shaking again, my table suck. Well, my embroidery table's good, but you end up still shaping anyways. Okay. Like I, I probably mentioned to you guys in my very other videos is I like to um, work on my, my orders or work on these parts in sections. So I like to get all the sewing done first much as I can, then I move to the serger, then I go to sewing, and so on and so forth. I would have such a hard time choosing sewing over embroidery. I just wouldn't be able to do it. I just like the versatility of making things because if you make the same thing over and over, you're going to get sick of it. Like this size four, I literally make all the time. So, but I don't make a number six birthday shirt all that often. So it's always kind of fun to get new, new orders. Okay. all my crap from last time. Okay. Good old color change. Oh, we have the applique. Just over here. with you guys. Yeah, 
can see the back of my bushy head. <laughs> Yeah, because these are even great like Candyland themed outfits. Um, so I don't have Candyland in my titles at all because I know I could get in trouble. Um, but I'm not. Have, I don't have any issues with copyright because it's not like I have any Disney characters or anything on my shirts. Okay. Let you stitch now. All right, I'm back. Um, I live by myself, so I love to talk to people. Yeah, I, I live by myself too, and it's been pretty quiet at work because most people are gone right now. So um, I wish I would get orders from Facebook, but I just can't get anything but views and people reached. Yeah, same here. I even try to price my prices kind of lower than what I would sell, but I still don't get anything. All my friends know I do embroidery and sewing, so they tell their friends and they tell their friends and so on. I have over 800 designs that my people choose from. Wow, that's that's impressive. That's really impressive. I think I only have like, I have 169 listings in my shop right now, I'm pretty sure. So I don't have that many options for people. But that's really cool. It's gonna get loud for a second, guys. Sorry. Cindy, do you just do like names and stuff on towels or monograms and letters and things like that? What do you price your, if I, if this might seem a touchy subject, but what do you price your towels and stuff at? I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm just a curious person, especially when it comes to the this time.
have a three ring folder of all the designs I did so far. Ritter them out, names, animals, flowers, and just about anything. First, my key kitchen towel set for $20 and my bath set's 30. That's that's a good price. You know, that's that's a pretty good deal for people too. Yeah, that's good. That's really nice. Are you thinking of upgrading soon? Your, your machine? Are you happy with it or Piece. It's a little gum drop, so it doesn't even require much fabric. Show you guys the shirt once it's all done stitching out. I'm sorry again, I have my back to you guys. I guess I can switch over here. I have a four by four and a five by seven. Looking into a six needle, but the price is price is so high. Yeah. I know what you mean. Even like the P P E P E. 500. Is it still a thousand dollars? I haven't looked at the price in a while. But I know that my machine, the new version of this machine that essentially had like it's wireless, it's 20, it's two thousand dollars. And I bought this machine for fifteen hundred. So, but it's just basically the same machine except this one little part. So, I don't know if that's just because they have that extra feature to it or inflation. I'm not super sure. Who knows nowadays? It's expensive to have a hobby nowadays. Even a business, a hobby, anything, it's expensive. Okay. Start trimming my pile here. So that goes back to the sewing. I also done hooded towels for the kiddos. Oh, that's cute. That's great that you have that much business organically. Have you been thinking about doing Etsy or are you not sure? 
I mean, it sounds like you have enough consistent business, right? Searcher. We'll get back to you in a second. Embroidery. Trim in all of my threads. Got like an assembly line going here. And then when my shirt's done and I need to press it, I will press, that's when I will also press my dress pieces. Uh, so that goes to serger. Okay, next color is a mossy green. Do do do. to sewing. My SC 1900 was 12,000, but I got it on sale for 800. That's not bad at all, especially for sewing an embroidery combo. I feel like that's not the worst price, but I think I got my four by four machine P535 for about maybe 500 or 400. So um, yeah, I would say, especially for your machine, since it is a combo, I feel like that 800 is a good price, but I would not have paid the 1200. Yes, right now I, I'm busy, so I'm not sure on it anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. Plus, if, if you don't have to deal with Etsy's fees and all that, then I would just stay away from it. If you already got that organic traffic coming in and you feel good with the amount of orders that you have now, like I would just stick with that and not push your luck. Because these Etsy fees are not very nice. But again, they make sense. So now I'm going to so the shorts together. Again, sorry about the shaking. So are you still working on your orders or are you all done with them? any of the rest of you sell through like word of mouth like definitely let you know feel free to include your experience in the chat if it's worked for you if it hasn't if you do a combination of word of mouth and Etsy please let me know because I'm always curious about people's various experiences and their ways of getting business God, I hate this part. I'll put you guys over here because I'll be over here in a minute. Get to my applique. I might have enough for this. We'll have to see. Just have enough. I think that 
what's the color that I use? Oh God. Now I'm second guessing myself. Um, I messed up the colors, so. Oh, God. I'm so annoyed. Okay, so here's a listing. It's kind of blurry, but I essentially mixed up this light blue with like it's supposed to be kind of like a tie-dye print in the middle so i mixed up these two uh so i think i'll probably have to do it again right so this circle these two circles i messed up mixed up the colors i almost always have the sample next to me but this time i felt confident in myself but i feel like they're too different Or what I could do is just, because I already, I just tacked down this applique. So what if I, okay, let me show you. So this is the first one. So this one is supposed to be in this print or this color. So, but you like, you can't really see the color of the outline too much. So what if I just took out this and got the light blue and, and put it in here? Do you think that would work? Cause I, I don't want to have to do this all over again. Like I could easily take the, these stitches out, no problem, but. Ugh. Well, Cindy, you're talking about being real. Here it is being real that I messed up and I wasn't paying attention. But I honestly don't think it's that much of an issue because there is some, oh, let me pull out the fabric because you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. So here's the fabric. This is the tie-dye fabric. So as you can see, there is some like blue in it. So like, what if, uh, my heart is like, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think, cause let me show you. Cause the blue looks fairly similar, right? Like here is the blue of this and then with the blue of that. I mean, I feel like it's pretty similar. So do you think I can maybe get away with it? I don't know. Because like I said, you can't really see the outline of the blue that much. So I don't think. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Because I think I'm just going to take this applique out like I'm gonna get my get picker thing run with it yeah thank you guys do it over and save the one you mess up for another project I don't know Oh, God. <laughs> Watch me do surgery here, you guys. I'm just going to have to. You know what? If I mess it up doing it this way, then I just will do it over again. Oh. I feel like it's not a big deal. Unless you're like 
looking at it with the magnifying glass for the listing. Oh, I love when the stitches come out like butter. So I decided I'm going to run with it. Um, which I know is not a very good move, but like I said, a lot of the colors in this, the applique fabric are pretty similar. Let me try not to trim my hair in the process here. That must be where it started. Oh God. Oh God. Don't trim the shirt. Don't trim the shirt. Shirt, you will remain intact. You're not gonna mess up. Just ever so slightly little tiny snips. Oh. Okay. I hope they don't really notice it, but we'll see. Get the correct, correct applique piece. <laughs> oh gosh. I knew it looked weird when I saw it stitch because it's supposed to be doing a bunch of different colors in the circle and I knew it looked a little too weird. I'll go back a step. All right. I'm running with it, you guys. Because like I said, literally, the pieces are like very similar. Like if I use this whole piece right here for it, you wouldn't even really be able to tell a difference. Because the swirl in the middle covers like 80% of the fabric. Okay. So note to self, always keep a your sample near you at all times. Even if you feel like you're an expert, you're not. So... So here it is. So like I said, I just messed up this little bit here. It was supposed to be in this kind of tie-dye print, but I feel like if it was the blue in here, I feel like I could get away with it. It's not a big thing to me if I would have received that as a customer. Thank you. I appreciate it. My heart like dropped when I saw that. I'm like, oh my gosh. Now it's going to work on the stem. Yeah, I feel like I would have been the same way, even if a fabric was like, because it, it's an applique, it's a, such a small applique piece. It's one thing if I messed up the number, then I would obviously have to do it over again. But since it's the, uh, just a very tiny applique piece, I feel like it's not the biggest deal. Because you can only really tell when you zoom into the picture. So, but in my mind, I know that I messed that one part up, but what can you do? All right, so it's going to stitch out the stem. So let me go back to my fair hair. Shorts.
Sorry if you get motion sickness. Let me actually get my thing. My sample. Yeah, so I always keep my sample. So here's just my sample piece. So I'm just gonna keep that by me. So I do not mess up any further. Okay. So we need green. This part, it's like short little bursts of embroidery. So I kind of have to sit here with my machine. Oh, I lost a subscriber. That's a shame. It's always sad when I see that I lost a subscriber. Okay. And then red. Oh no, this is hot pink. Yeah, like that literally took like eight seconds. So that's why I'm just sitting here waiting for it all to stitch out. Um, we got brown. This 
This is why I would like at least a 10 needle machine. Right now, red. the next couple days. Do you have like orders or something um, else going on in your life? Oh, you said you have a market, right? Or who said that they... Uh, oh no, Coffee Mom Life said she does has has a craft show. Craft fair. Um, yellow to gold. Almost done with these little dots and stuff here. Yeah, I'm planning on, well, tomorrow I shouldn't have any orders to work on. I just might relax when I get home. I mean, that just sounds nice. But I always have stuff to do around here, so who knows. I have 75 bennies to embroider deer heads. You mean beanies? My friend owns a rod and gun club. Oh, cool. I would love big orders like that. I think I would kind of like lose my mind, but love it at the same time. Do you get a lot of big orders like that or your orders made mainly like smaller? Time. It's this fun striped fabric, which I believe I got in the discount section at Joanne's, if any of you are curious. Luckily, we're past the halfway point for the shirt. And we can move on. 
because it'd be nice to be done by nine, but I don't think that's going to happen. Been chatting too much. <laughs> Well, at least you have two machines that you can work with. Do you have like multiple hoops so you can like hoop a bunch of them at the same time? holidays I get large orders most of the time I get about 10 to 30 orders in one shot wow that's impressive yes it's beanies gotcha it's like isn't Benny's like I think Benny is like a term for like a hometown or something isn't it I think I don't know. It might just be a New Jersey thing because they called uh they call in town or Benny Bennies or Beanies. I don't know. It's it's some term. Probably could have went to the server or finished that last piece, but what can you do? All right, now it's gonna definitely have the towards the finish line here. Only have eight more color changes. So let me get orange again. two at a time so I can get them done with, with the regular time. Cool. Yeah, I have two six by ten embroidery frames, but I usually only just hoop one shirt at a time since like I use temp adhesive spray, which obviously is temporary adhesive, so that's why I don't usually hoop more. That's why I usually hoop a shirt at a time because it's a temp adhesive. <laughs> Beanies, I think. Yeah, it's like a, be a bean, like a coffee bean or something. That's all right. No worries. I'm not the best speller myself. I'm just getting the hem ready to sew for the shorts.
to embroidery. Just changing my thread color to blue, royal blue. So I usually like to fully prep my shorts first and then work on this, the ruffles. That way I can just get these done because if you don't go for this, is that kind of the sh shorts are like the foundation for the rest of the skirt. Obviously because it's a skirt. I don't know how much, too much talking I'm going to do for the rest of this live, but you know, when you got to get orders done, you got to get them done. And after this, after the shirt and the sport, I have that dress to make, so. Lots to do, and I'm going to turn on my I wonder how eyelet lace would look on those shorts or e even a dress. Yeah, I haven't tried lace, honestly. I feel like it'd be fun to do. love to get a cover stitch one day too but I just don't know where I would put all these freaking machines it's kind of a small ish room so I kind of have to be smart about how I use it one day when I get my own house I would definitely like a nice big craft room preferably in the basement because then I would have more room to work with I would love to tr test out like different fabrics and finishes and things like that. I just think that would be fun. Also want to make tutus. That's another thing. I have a bunch of tool in my uh, closet that I haven't touched at all. So, oh, excuse me. How dare you unthread yourself? Sorry, that was just my mini heat press letting me know it's heated up. Thread became unthreaded for some reason. Filled up three new bobbins, so hopefully I won't run out of bobbin thread anytime soon. Okay, shorts are all prepped. They're all done. I usually kind of put them at the top here. All right, now I'm going to move you guys over here or no I put you over here that's right so I will do the casing first
And I also have done another live on how to sew the skirt. So if you're curious on how I make these, you can just go back and watch that video. Just have to make sure I have enough thread for all of them. I don't like making a trip to get thread in the middle of trying to get them done. What kind of, uh, where do you get your thread from? Do you get it from uh, Joann's or have you, because I just buy my online in like a big cone and they last me a long time. Right. Do the first part and then I will change threads. All right. Last applique is light purple. Am I right? Yes. you guys. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just cutting out the applique. I just need to change colors. Two of lavender. back. When I'm working on orders, I don't even answer my phone. Oh, really? Apparently I forgot to how to iron. Oh gosh, don't fall. Is cover stitch machine just for hemming? Yes, I believe so. I don't know much about it, so I'm pretty sure that's how it works. It's usually like the hem of like shorts or a dress or something like that. So, but I don't think it's super necessary to have a cover stitch. So I'm content with what I have. finish this freaking shirt move on and then I can just focus on this squirt so we need red Do -do -do. All right, so let's go to the sewing machine. So this part. This is the elastic casing for the waistbands. Thank you. 
there's that all prepped. Put that to the side. Never turn to this long thread here. I get for my local sewing shop in Fredonia. Gotcha. Do they have, they sell like big cones or are they kind of smaller? Okay, now green. And then I think one more step for that and then another. Sweet. Almost done with this shirt. That literally just shows you how long it takes to stitch this out with all the color changes and everything. Okay, so now back to here. Try it without the clips just to, to see how it is. Just I'm just a curious person right now to see how this works because I usually clip all around it but I'm going to try this for this one to see if I actually need to do that or not but it's all kind of just staying where it's supposed to so I might be okay. All right, another color change. Let's go to my machine. Green, white. Then I think after this step, it just has to do the name. Actually turning out much faster than usual. Hopefully it works without the not clipping thing. change. Just got to do the name. She wants the purple. So do the purple. Go to the sewing.
you see, you got to change up how you do your sewing or embroidery and just find an easier way if it's not working for you. Because this is nice. occurred in a little bit at some point, but then I just stop it and keep going. Nice. So here's one all nicely prepped. I don't even have to use these. Magic books. Although they are magical. It's all done. After we finish this squirt, I will take it out of the hoop and then we can start working on the next project. So this will probably be a long live because I just feel like getting all these orders done right now. They're smaller, but 5,000 yards are on them. Okay. That's about, that's how much are on the Madeira ones as well. So it's pretty on par. Are they pretty expensive there or are they a decent price? Ooh, it's nice and easy not having to clip this. Last bit we have to iron and then we're done with the iron.
Speaking pretty good timing. old pile of stuff here. Just keeping a clip so I know where to stop and to start. mini heat press off. Kind of put it to the side. All right, now we have to make the markings, which should be two inches. Yeah, I make this size so many times I have, for the most part, the measurements remembered, memorized. Here's the ruler. All right, so a half an inch from the top. Two inches from that line. Then another two inches from that line. And I'm using a, an erasable, not kind of an erasable marker, disappearing ink marker. What kind of showing machine do you work with? I have the Juki TL 2010Q embroidery machine. It was about $1,000 on Amazon. And I really like this machine, but I just wish it had the, um, I just really wish it had uh, different types of stitches. So like the zigzag stitch would have been really helpful. Uh, but luckily my original sewing machine does have the zigzag stitch. So um, I can just use that if I ever need to use it. But this one is, like I said, it's a Juki. Um, I don't think it's like the best quality Juki, but it works for me. And I originally got this machine for bag making and um yeah, so it can work with heavy duty bags. Um, obviously right now I only really use it for clothing, but it's overall a really great machine. And I just buy my machine oil from Joann's. Uh, it is, I use the Zoom Spout um, uh, oil for my machine. I don't oil it that much though. I probably should oil it more, but I do not. Okay. So that's together. Let's start pinning. So here's one. Making sure my side seams match up with the sides. And then I do the bottom line first. Yeah, this actually works with not having to pin everything or clip everything. OK. 
see. Even though I don't think it really matters because the raw edges will be hidden anyways. I'm just clipping the first layer, pinning it actually. I buy everything for my embroidery and sewing from her. She gives me a discount on time. I only pay three eleven per spool, but the last they last a long time. That's that's a really good deal. That's really great. It's nice to have a subscriber that kind of lives close to me. I think I have a few that are from like New York City and stuff. Some are international as well. So that's super cool. Yeah, I pin one ruffle at a time and then I sew it. That way I don't have to worry about all these pins poking me and stuff going weird. <clears throat> yeah, I bought my, I don't know if you've heard of Jackie Lynn's uh, sewing center, but that's where I got my um, my embroidery machine from there. Because I originally lived in Syracuse, but somebody recommended Jackie Lynn. So I went there and I got my embroidery machine. And it was during COVID, so I could just order it online and pick it up. And they were kind of shocked because th they're used to doing sales like in person. But I was just like, nope, I ordered it online. So they had it all packaged and ready to roll for me. So it was really, we just pretty much got there. Drove the hour and a half, got there, picked it up in like two seconds, and then drove back home. So that was when I was living with my parents. But now, since I live there, about half an hour drive from where I live. So it's much easier now to go and possibly maybe eventually pick up a new machine from them because they're affiliated with Brother, the Brother brand, which is really nice. Now to sew the first layer. Then this, the dress should work up fairly quickly. It'll probably take about half an hour. Especially if I'm in the zone and I just work on it and get it done. And it should be a quick stitch out. Then maybe we can package the orders together so you can see it all from start to finish. Yeah, it, wor it really worked well not having to clip everything, so I think I'll do that from now on. Always try not to poke myself, but I almost always poke myself in the process. Okay. Yeah, I love going to local fabric shops and local craft stores. I think it's just, it's a good time. I need to check out their stuff for uh, back to school as well. Maybe I'll go this weekend. I'll be here this weekend, so who knows? Got to start getting out. Got to start preparing for all that hoopla. Coming to where we started. Okay, there's one layer all sewn on. Now we'll work on pinning the next. 
Uh, you are fired. My watch is telling me to stand, but I don't feel like it, so sorry. I love sewing. I even like watching people sewing. Like, I love watching Amber Bliss because she's just, I love how she explains everything and she does a really great job. And even just listening to the machine sounds, I just think it's super relaxing. Okay. So like I said, I'm pinning the second layer. And all these layers is what makes it kind of poofy looking. I can still kind of see the line, but I think I might need to get a new marker soon. Pretty sure I got it from like either Hobby Lobby or Joann's, but I'm pretty sure it was Hobby Lobby. Yeah, Brother Bracoma or Melka would be ideal, but my bank account's going to decide what's ideal. <laughs> Again, ideally a 10, multi, 10 needle multi needle would be my preference. I just think six needles I would just get not bored of easily, but just outgrow easily. But I mean, with uh, you, Cindy, I just think it makes sense to, if you do like single colors and for a one color for one project, then probably makes sense to get the six needle, but stuff is expensive nowadays. But like I said, I've been looking at the buy embroidery machine, but I just feel like it would be too loud. I'd rather kind of have more of a quiet machine, even though I know multi needles will aren't that quiet. Um, I'd prefer something that is quieter. Okay. Here's a second ruffle pinned. So we are coming, starting to come to the end of this squirt. And then after that, we have the dress finish up the shirt to get that all tender touched and whatnot. So would have got these done quicker if I wasn't on live, but now I feel like I'm in the, in the groove. Got a little chit chat in and now just time to focus. There's the second layer. Now I just can you simply use magic clips for this layer.
It's nice. I called my lady when I save up money and asked her if any embroidery machine was on sale. She put it aside and I went and picked it up. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I don't know if they, if that, um, the sewing center that I got mine from, I don't know if they do sales. Maybe they have a 4th of July sale because that would be ideal. But the thing is, is I won't be here for 4th of July. Um, I will be back at the Jersey Shore. So I'm taking, let's see, I am flying out next Tuesday. Not this Tuesday, but Tuesday the 28th, I guess, 28th, 27th, whatever that Tuesday is. Um, I'll be flying out to New Jersey. Um, and then obviously I have Memorial or uh, Fourth of July off, and then I'm there's a staff appreciation day that I'm taking off Tuesday. And then the week after that, I'm taking Monday and Tuesday off. So I'm gonna have like 20 days at the Jersey Shore. So it's gonna be super nice. I'm really looking forward to it. I just came back from there and I, ever since growing up, I've always spent all my, all my entire summers there at the shore. Fortunately, last year I wasn't able to spend that much time there, but working, being able to work remotely three days a week, it's so nice. And then my job throws in staff appreciation days as well. So they're very like supportive overall of their staff, which is awesome. Plus, who wants to spend every day of the week in an office in the summer? Um, especially for my particular population that I work with, they're all not on campus in the summer. So, um, well, I would say like maybe 5% of the population's on campus. So it's very, very quiet. Um, and even then, most of the students decide to take summer courses elsewhere. So... It's not like I'm dealing with that all that much. So it's very quiet right now. So there's a third ruffle. Now we need to pin clip the, the back here. So I can usually tell what the front is, is because the seam in the middle will be more towards the front than in the back. Cause obviously the back, you got a, a little booty. So. Um, there's the back. This one worked out actually pretty fast. Oh, whoops, I take that out. Didn't even feel that one go through, but that happens sometimes. I think it's okay otherwise. So we'll just stitch over that again. So then the back, this is the back, this is the front, back, back. So there's a lot of pieces to this, but if you're like me and you just make these all the time, they work up really quickly. It, the first one took me like hours to make. It's easier to make adult clothes or children's clothes. I make myself clothes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm thinking of starting to get into the making adult clothes because I saw a pair of uh, a short shorts pattern for adults. So I'm thinking it'd be cute to like have matching adult and kid shorts. Um, but again, that requires time and Unfortunately, that's something that I'm lacking nowadays, but that's why this time that I'm here for this next week and I guess a week, right? Because next Tuesday after work, I'm literally going to be flying right out. So um, yeah, so that's kind of crazy to think about. So I only have a week to work on stuff. 
shorter stitch length. So I knit at about a half an inch. Seam allowance. Or a little bit less, depending. It always feels good to finish an order. Actually turn on my heat press. Do you see the lights flickering? That's just because I don't think that I have the best connection to my apartment when it comes to electricity. God knows what it'll be like when I get a multi-needle, but that's a problem for another day, my friends. That is a problem for another day. Whenever that day comes, who knows? Like I said, I'm just doing my research, trying to find the best option. I'd probably prefer to pick pick up a machine in a store though. So if I had a preference, that would probably be it. surge this top edge here and we'll fold it over Now we just have to add the elastic, which I believe is 21 and a half inches. Yes. Um, I think I have a little strip left. Oh, that's not going to be big enough. I have other elastic. It's okay. So I'm using my alternate elastic. So I need my big ruler, which is in the other room. Shirt stitch up nice. All right, you guys, we're slowly but surely getting these orders done. And I don't have my big scissors, which are over right here. So twenty one and a half, which this is one inch elastic. I think I have a few extra of those because I ran out of my big roll here, so this is literally all I have left. Look how little that is, so. Okay, get my pin. I'm gonna start sliding it through the casing. It's actually easier if I just use it with my finger. I actually haven't used this as elastic for my squirts, so it should be interesting to see how it turns out.
Oh, I got another item favorite. Hopefully one of these days it'll equate to a sale. But that would be crazy, right? We get sales nowadays. Yeah, usually the other elastic, it kind of goes in easier. So this one's kind of more difficult to work with, but it's okay. As long as it's elastic-y, then it should work. If you guys have just joined, if you haven't given this video a thumbs up, I would really, really appreciate it. Hopefully it will help my little channel grow. There we go. It should be almost heated up. Perfect timing because I'm almost done with this squirt. Yep. Usually when the lights flicker, that means it's done. Okay. Take the pin out. Then I usually always make sure that I don't have it messed up. So I pin the two layers of elastic together just to make sure. Everything feels great, it looks great. So I'm going to go sew this elastic together and then we'll start getting the shirt prepared, finished, and then we'll work on the dress. I'm planning on just cranking that sucker out as well. So still shorter stitch length. Go back and forth a bunch of times. Trim. Running out of my little name tag, so I, I need, desperately need to order more, which I'll probably do tonight, just thinking about it. I don't think I have any more fours, size fours left, so. Gotta make do. I'm just gonna start working on sewing this casing closed. Get my name tag prepped. And luckily, like I said, this isn't an outfit. It's just literally this the squirt. So I don't have to do anything else. I know lights, I'm gonna get to it in like two seconds. Lights are flickering, being dramatic. Okay. Trim away the excess threads. There's one. Get rid of any remaining random thread bits that are deemed unnecessary. All right, so now the squirt is all complete. So there's what we got, nice and stretchy. Hopefully they love it and they'll be able to tell what the back is because it has the name tag obviously in the back. So there's that, one order is officially complete.
Now let's put you guys here so you can see me pressing the fabrics. But first, I need to get this off the hook. Trim away any random threads, which that looks like it's it. Pop it out. No matter how many times I change this trash can, it always gets filled up in like two seconds. It's kind of obnoxious. I'm just getting any bits of the tearaway stabilizer. It's kind of hard doing this inner circle here. Okay. Get it for the number. Got that one already. Trim loose threads. Again, this is just for the back of the shirt only. Any random loose threads I'm finding, I'm just trimming, throwing into my trash. Don't expect to get every little thread because you're not going to. No matter how hard you try, it's just not gonna happen. Just get any threads that could possibly show through the front of the shirt. All right, heat press, I know you're, you're heating up. Okay. Looks pretty good. Hope your channel does grow. You are fantastic. Oh, thank you. That makes me so happy. I haven't had many subscribers lately, even when I post more videos. So I'm not so sure what's going on, but I'm kind of posting the same content as other people that I'm subscribed to, and they have thousands of subscribers. So I don't know. It feels like I kind of hit a wall once I hit 400 and then it's been kind of slow since. I don't, just don't know if that's how it is or what. But I appreciate your kind words. Okay. I'm going to go to the heat press, get this baby pressed, and I'll put her in the packaging. tender touch. If you're new to my channel, I use something called tender touch on the back of my embroidered shirts. It just basically makes it nice and soft against a child's skin so the embroidery hopefully does not agitate them.
Right, I'll shake it off a little bit and I'll press the front so all the applique pieces will stay and to get out any wrinkles. So here's a shirt. Here's the front of the shirt that we did. Super cute, very happy with it. Nicely centered, not too far down from the top. So I think it'll lay on the child very nicely. Open, press the bottom so it's all nicely, nice and smooth. This doesn't need much. So yeah, like I said, here it is all pressed. Hey, how did you get into sewing and embroidery? Uh, through this platform, through YouTube, really. That's kind of how I really got into, into all this. I learned pretty much all through YouTube. Let me get my stuff here. Yeah, I learned all through YouTube. Um, I kind of figured out sewing on my own, like the basic stitches, but I did learn how to sew different complex projects through YouTube. And then I kind of learned how to read patterns and stuff like that on my own. So there she is, all cute. Put her back in the plastic. Thing. But yeah, I've always had really a passion for crafting in general. Um, but I really started to get really into embroidery by watching Angela Jasmina. Um, just watching her work on her orders. That's really kind of how I got into making kids items. And then I kind of just learned how to, like I said, sew and, and stuff on my own. But for the most part, the techniques that I've learned were from her essentially. And then also I did watch um, Little Alessia Co. Um, Adelaida. So there's the shirt all packaged. I did learn through Adelaida as well, especially learning the flatbed embroidery machines. That's kind of how I became familiar with how to embroider. I'm just gonna put this in the done pile. So two out of three orders are done. Um, dress is over here. There's that. So I'm going to press all of my pieces for my dress. Then after we finish the dress, we can start packaging. I will just have to do one piece at a time, that's fine. I'm just gonna put everything on my chair. I only press it for about five seconds each. I'm doing it for all of my pieces. Love my heat press. I would recommend if you have a small business to get one. Okay. And guess what fabric it's in, you guys? Any guesses? 
There's the hint. It's colorful. Which you may or may not have seen me use a million bajillion times in my videos. <laughs> well. If you've guessed the beloved candy print, then you are correct. Beloved by many on Etsy. It is a really cute pattern and print though. It gets like a novelty cotton brand. Yeah, I really started to get more into sewing and embroidery uh, basically when the pandemic started because unfortunately that's when I lost my job and everything and but luckily the week that I was unemployed is when my Etsy took off because I was making tons and tons of face masks so that was super cool and a lot of fun very very overwhelming for sure But I got her all done. Yeah, this customer, she ordered a couple hours ago and she's like, can I get it by, ship it out by today or tomorrow? I'm like, I'm at work, but I can ship it out tomorrow. So here we are working on the order at 9.22 at night. So I'm going to be tired at work tomorrow, but that's okay. Luckily, I work remotely on Wednesday, so just have to power through tomorrow. And then I can work remotely and chill in my papers until I have my Zoom meetings. But I always like to press my dresses just to get any of the wrinkles out. Also to add my stabilizer too, of course. I'm going to have to buy more um, plastic snaps, too, because I think I'm running low. All right. Now for... Now for the... guys are new to my channel or you're familiar this is when I would add my stabilizer that we just cut out a bunch don't worry I'm not anywhere near the heat press being careful I make these long strips because, as you know, different sizes or some may be bigger, some may be smaller. So I just leave the big strips and cut them to the size that I need. Because I'm adding stabilization for where the plastic snaps will be because, as you may know, I have my dresses have an open back to them. Two more, and then we're done with the heat press. Are you guys working on any fun orders or any fun projects right now?
The pieces are prepped. Shirt is pressed so I can turn off this. Get ready to stitch out this dress so we can be done with this live. Okay, so I'm just going to put my panels over here and sew all the panel pieces together. Everything is just still a hot mess in here, so hoping to upload a video soon of me just doing some general organizing because there's a lot of empty space here that's just not being utilized, so I would like that to change for sure. I'm about to start working on my grand grandkids' 4th of July sets. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I only sold two shorts for Fourth of July. That's it. Always make sure that I finish the seam, which I did. Yeah, hopefully this will work up fairly quickly. Usually the panel, the skirt panel works up the fastest. go put them all together love this shirt thank you carol appreciate the nice comment yeah i was kind of hesitant to start a youtube channel because i didn't know if i would get any hate but this community is just so nice i don't know why i thought like people wouldn't like me but Enjoy my content. Okay, 
sewing machine. I'm gonna make my darts, which I've explained in multiple videos, so you guys should know what I am talking about. make these quick because I'm kind of tired. I, think I have some staff meetings for work tomorrow too. This is why I love my machine is because it cuts the thread for me. I don't have to worry about trimming anything. This part's always the most satisfying to me. I don't know why. Yeah, I shipped out two dress orders yesterday and then I got one today. So slowly but surely my dresses are coming back in style. Not that they were not ever not in style, but you know how some items don't sell for a while and they sell a lot and they don't sell. And Blah, blah, blah. That's pretty much how Etsy works in a nutshell. Plus these dresses are a lot cheaper than my birthday outfits, so. And they're cute, you know, you can wear them, you know, not just for a birthday, but year round. But also, since this is such a small, this is 9 to 12 month size, so luckily, since it's small, it'll work up faster. All right, two more. Sewing down the pleats for the So they're not flip floppy. Okay. 
All right, searching the bottom of the dress. So now I'm going to pin down the hem, clip it, I'm trying to get this done as soon as I can so then I can go about my day or the rest of my day, which I usually go to bed around 10, so. Oh, it says nine. I thought there was no nobody here. I was concerned for a second. There's nine of you, so that's good. Yep, just cranking this one out, you know, just trying to be quicker about it. So, because my brain is starting to leave me here. Like I said, the smaller the size, the quicker it works up. So that's what's happening here. I'll show you my new poly mailers that I got. They're super cute. Very pleased. They took months to get here too. Okay. All right. It's a longer stitch length, quarter of an inch. Let's roll. A strawberry shortcake, so I might have a slice of that after this, just as a reward for all my hard work today at work and here in my craft room. like that our skirt portion of the dress is all prepped ready to go so I'll just put that to the side and now we will start working on the front main lining and the front lining I guess Yeah, 
stitching up the shoulder seams. Is the fabric knit or cotton? It is quilting cotton fabric. I prefer to work with quilting cotton just because it's not as slippery and more predictable. But it's, it's up to you. That's why with this print is that's why we use the elastic waistband is because the fabric is not stretchy. This works up really quick if you're only doing one, so that's cool. Just trimming the serge threads because I usually sew them in a row. doing. I'm just pinning the front main fabric to the lining main fabric. No dilly dallying here you guys that's for sure. Cranking this out. Just that type of energy that I like. I like to get stuff done so I can go about my day. Just trying to make sure that I Clip all the corners as close as I can. Should have timed myself, that would have been fun. I feel like this could have taken like 20 minutes almost. the surgeon most of this back try not to congregate too much of the magic clips <laughs> Thank you. 
right, making sure I didn't miss any of the corners or the curves. Kind of pressing in hard. Oh, missed a little bit. I have to go back a bit more there. That's all right, it happens. Sometimes you got to go through it again, and that's totally normal. Perfect. Oh, a little dicey over here. Yep, another hole. It's okay. Just cut in a little closer. Should have done it. Every once in a while I get lucky and it just sells right through, but sometimes you gotta go over it once or twice. Perfect. Okay, I love working with knits. Yeah, everybody has their preference. I like knits, but I feel like quilt and cotton is just more predictable and easy to work with, but I don't mind working with knits either. stitches. Ow. Going to turn on my mini heat press again. Turn it inside out. or right side out. Perfect. Do you guys have any questions for me or anything you guys want to talk about? Gosh, almost four hours. That's insane. I'm usually super introverted, so I'm going to like not want to talk to anybody at work tomorrow. <laughs> like meetings canceled. Sorry. Social batteries run out. <laughs> but I have a lot of meetings tomorrow, so I can't really do that. They're all over Zoom though, so that's one thing that's kind of, well, the pandemic sucks, but that's the one of the few things that was nice that came out of it is like pretty much everything is over Zoom, so I don't have to move my, leave my office. Plus, 
um, for my particular role, I can work remotely three days a week and so can the other 10 people in my role. So um, it's nice to kind of have that flexibility. So it makes more sense to do everything over Zoom. So I'm just gonna get this all nicely pressed. Any heat press is, is warmed up. I use my serger as much as I use my embroidery machine. I would say same. Yeah, because I would say sometimes most people just buy the birthday outfits, but like as a set, but I would say there's an equal amount of people that buy just the skirt versus just the embroidery. So the embroidered shirt. So I, I, I would say I'm the same way as well. That's why I think sewing and embroidery as a combination is just really, really great and really cool because you can make outfits and stuff. Like you can embroider a shirt and then you can do, uh, sew up a pair of shorts or a skirt or whatever may you pleases you. So it's nice to have that option. So if any of you are considering opening up a small business, particular anything to do with clothing, I think serger, sewing machine, and um, embroidery machine are vague ones that you should get. But probably start out with embroidery just to kind of get your business going. But even if you have a Cricut, you could also make shirts with your Cricut. Um, I haven't really touched mine, but for... Um, I don't think I'll have time to make mock-ups for Wednesday, but for my Wednesday live or my item, new items that I'm going to be uploading, I'm planning on making some items with my serger. So, or not serger, my um, Cricut machine. So now I'm going to start clipping the front to the back and via the sides. And then now it's kind of almost done which honestly took what, maybe half an hour to get this done. I feel like that's good timing. Really good timing actually, since I'm going to bed soon. Okay. So I always turn it out just to make sure I don't have it flipped around, which I don't. Okay. To unplug my heat press, that's okay. Do it in a sec. side. So getting three items done in a live, I feel like is pretty good. Broidered shirts obviously would probably take less time, but 30 minute dress, I mean, you can't beat that. Especially if you have like a last minute party or something, you could just crank one of these out. Uh, they come up all the way. This pattern specifically is, you can get it, the smallest size is one to three months and the largest is 10 years, nine to 10 years. So you have a lot of versatility when it comes to this specific sewing pattern. Yeah, I wouldn't, if you guys could choose between sewing and embroidery, what would it be? Like you had, to, you had to choose one, what would you choose? Because if I had a choice, it's tough. I don't know. Oh, I didn't sew all the way through. I had a, the corner poking out, but it should be OK. 
okay now. Yep. All right, now I'm just gonna start getting this prepped, which I usually search the bottom edge, making note of the back. dress pattern did you get it off of etsy i got it from five berries b-e-r-r-i-e-s on etsy i don't remember the name of the listing but you can kind of tell by the picture of the, the item all right so now getting it together here putting the front or the top to the bottom And yes, I did get it off Etsy. Pretty much all my sewing patterns, I mean, all of them actually are from Etsy. I just searched for different things. Um, oh, the no, the dress pattern um, I got from Made My Meat By Me Patterns. And I got the skort from Five Berries on Etsy. And they're both Etsy shops. Then I, uh, yeah, it's a really great, really great patterns. Um, I like it because they have pictures as well. I'm a very visual person and I learn best that way. So um, worked out for me. I love PDF patterns. Me too. Because then you can print them in as many times as you want. All right, let's finish this thing. And I'll show you my power mailers and we can package them together. Just worked out really fast. tags so this is nine to twelve months uh, nine to twelve I gotta organize my sizing labels there we go
embroidery. I'm thinking kind of the same thing. I love both. They're both great, but I feel like making something personalized just is more satisfying. Can I push you more in the middle? A little bit. So here are my clothing labels. So that's how you know the back. Now, all we have to do is get the snaps snapped. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find my embroidery poker tools. Oh, it's right. So I usually use a combination of a hand press and a my regular press just because I'm lazy and don't feel like changing the press, all the presses and whatnot. And I'm just going to poke a hole through the top. Um, I'll do three holes. Poke. One at the bottom. Poke. Okay. Then I need three of you. One, two, three. Get my hand press. Since I don't do these that much, that doesn't really bother my hands at all when I do this. And even when I travel, I could always bring these instead of my big press. Which is probably what I will end up doing when I go back to New Jersey. All right, so there are the three all there. I'm um, gonna grab the three pointy ones. One, two, three. One, two, three. Go to my press. Uh, let me turn off my embroidery machine. Okay. below my desk just so they're all out of the way and I put bring them up when I need them Almost done. Two snaps, do the snap test, and we will start packaging. Probably put these in the mail room tomorrow before I go to work. So 10.07, okay. All right. Bye, Stacy. Thank you for joining us today. I know it's been a long live, so you're probably going to bed.
Just doing the snap test here. Thank you for joining. All right. Dress is all done. Super cute, got the snaps in the back. So we made three items today, so that's pretty good. Let me put my press down here. So let me get my shipping labels all printed. Sorry if you get motion sickness. Plugging in my connectors. Okay. Sorry, I have to look at my double chins here. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let me make sure I don't have anything I'm missing. 65 visit views today. That's pretty, pretty nice. Get shipping labels, shipping Tuesday. Okay, review, purchase, print. You guys can hear the most satisfying sound in the world. Just wait, just wait. Okay, you guys ready? Here you go. Oh, I love that sound. I just freaking love it. Okay. So now I have zero open orders. I feel good about that. Okay, so let me zoom out of this. Unplug all of that. Let's start packaging. Get my shipping labels. Okay. Um, All right, so the first order is for Shadashia. She ordered the nine to 12 months dress. Include a thank you card and a coupon for people encouraging them to check out my website and hopefully buy from me again. And then I got these super cute poly mailers from gracefulmailers.com. Highly recommend it. Let me actually show you guys. So I got this pattern that I think is pretty pretty much summer. Um, then I have this, which I feel like can be for summer and fall. And I also got some cute sunflowers, which I thought could be cute for summer and fall as well. So like I said, I got them all from Graceful Mailers. If you're re-watching this live, I will probably have an affiliate link li listed below, but I really love these poly mailers. They're really cool. They feel like really high quality. So recommend that you guys check them out. Cover that up so you guys can't see that. And I'm putting some... Priority mail stickers on it since it is priority mail. Okay. 
Okay, one order is packaged. Next is the shirt for Elizabeth going to Jessup, Pennsylvania. So luckily for this, I don't have to put it in another poly mailer or not poly mailer, um, plastic sleeve. So I'm just gonna put all her invoice, the thank you card, and the coupon code with the shirt. Just put it there nicely in the back. And the other two are just first class. Next, we got the squirt going to Teresa in I Idaho. I is Idaho IA, or am I just being an idiot? Indiana, not Indiana. Indiana, I think, is ID or IN. I don't know. Iowa, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm thinking. There you go. Got to unplug it again. Okay. So three orders, getting done after work. I feel like that's pretty good. So again, the thank you card with the coupon code. And that's essentially how I package my items. So nothing super crazy. Did you make those thank you cards? I did. Um, I actually purchased them from Etsy, the template actually. And then I just used some, I used some plain, um, uh, what's it called? Like stiff paper, what's that? Um, not cardboard, um, cardstock, there we go. So I printed off the design. Um, here's a kind of a close up, so. For the most part, I kept it the same. I kept all of this the same, except I think it said parcels and I just changed it to purchase. Um, and then I, it said, leave a, please help our business grow by leaving a review. I think that's pretty much what they said and the five stars were there. I, I just changed this section because it had, I think, Facebook and Instagram. Um, but I changed, I found it through Canva, this uh, YouTube symbol. Um, basically, if you purchase this, um, actually, let me include this. Um, in the description. Thank you. Printable small business. Thank you cards. I got them from Girls Got Hustle. So let me edit the description and I'll put it in the description. Um, 
Okay. So yeah, so that's my that's what I include for my thank you cards and then my um coupon cards. I just found a template off of um Vistaprint and I just put get 15% off your next order and then I won't show you the back cuz it has a coupon code but it says use code blah 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 at checkout and then it has um like at the bottom here it has my website and it has the same on the back so yeah, they are very nice cards. I really liked the look of them. I feel like they're like pretty professional looking. Um, and like I said, I edit it through um, like they, they have like templates and stuff. So you can print four at a time. So you can print up four using one sheet of cardstock. So I just make a bunch of them. Um, and as you can see, I'm starting to run out. So I'm going to have to actually make more. But um, I think I made like 50 of these. So it's kind of surprising that I'm running low. But yeah, I found them through Etsy. I recommend that you guys, if you do do thank you cards, to find some sort of a template or a guideline to kind of help you figure out um, what you like and just kind of make your business look more professional. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're really nice quality. They also have instructions showing you how to, to edit the thank you cards, how to download the templates. It has like a whole list. So I think they're really great. So uh, yeah, that is going to be it for today's live. Um, it was definitely a long one, but I kind of, like I said, I missed you guys, missed talking to you. Um, it was really nice meeting some of you that I haven't spoken to before, perhaps just due to the timing of this live being kind of in the evening versus when I do it in the early afternoon. But who knows, I might shake it up every once in a while and do a surprise live here and there. But I will be going live this coming Wednesday. So let's see, it's the 20th. So on the 22nd, um, I will be going live again. So like I said, I'm all caught up on Etsy orders. So I'm planning on making new items again for a specific theme um, just to kind of get ahead of the game, let's just say. So uh, definitely look forward to that live. Um, not expecting it to be as long as this one, but I kind of wanted to show you guys from the beginning of me cutting out fabric to getting all the orders organized, embroidering the shirt. Um, just from start to finish, really, I just think the whole process is really cool. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this live. If you did and you haven't given this video a thumbs up yet, please consider doing so. That would greatly help me and my little channel grow. Um, kind of a little engine that could my channel, hoping to uh, gain more subscribers and to reach more people. Um, and just to kind of show you guys what I do um, and just kind of learn to get to learn and grow together. So thank you, Janie and Julianne, Sonia, Stacy. I know you left, but thank you all so much for joining this live. Cindy as well. Um, and Carol, all of you, thank you so much for joining. Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing as well, because like I said, my name is Megan. I do sewing, embroidery, and other crafty things. So I hope to see you guys um, live this coming Wednesday. Bye, everyone.